Danny Flexen here, four seconds out with unbeaten light heavyweight. Stephen, not Andre Ward. We should make that clear, although you were happy to take the compliment when your opponent misnomered you up there. You said about disappointment in your face when you yeah, realised yeah, you were yeah. at the interview and Andre Ward. Um, no, yes, <laughs> I think a big man got his names mixed up, but listen, I'll take that compliment any day. I'm sure it'll happen the other way around one day. Andre Ward will be doing some punditry and they'll address him as Stephen Ward once you're, once you're right up there, <laughs> no question. Um, golden contract tournament, how much of a boost is this for you and your career? The guarantee, if you win, obviously, of, of three fights in a year and then the carrot at the end of it as well? Yeah, massive, massive opportunity. Um, I played the MTK, MTK Global for, you know, organise this. I was just saying to someone else, you hear rumours of things like this, you know, competition might happen. Um, not even at a scale, but, you know, we whispers of it. And nothing ever materialises. There only are whispers where... There was a whisper of this one, and look at it now, it's happening, we're on our third one now, it's a massive, massive opportunity, life changing. You've been, before the Liam Conroy fight back in June, you were carefully kind of building a pro career, doing really well, outclassing your opponents to a large extent, and then the Conroy fight came along, it was a complete war. Were there a lot of positives associated with that, people are more aware of who you are now, you've proved that you can get through a kind of blood and guts battle as well? Yeah, I think... Uh, it was definitely a lot of people started talking about the fight after that and started recognising me a wee bit more, which does really bother me. You know, it's obviously it's nice, but for me, it was having that box ticked in the head where when stuff gets really gritty in there, you have to know that you can sort of bite down the gum seal and, and go through it. And I feel in myself, personally, that I've done that. So it gives me a good step and stone going into this fight where I know if it gets tough, I have it there, but necessarily I should be smart enough not to get to that point. Well, yeah, I'm guessing you also recognise from the outside, especially when watching it back, you don't want too many of those too early yeah. in your career. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, things like that shorten your career. Um, but I think it would be silly to come away and not learn from it. And I feel like I have learned from it. I feel like I'll improve and have improved as a fighter from it. And I look forward to showing that on, on Saturday night. You obviously got to pick in the draw. You got one of those balls that allows you the choice. Was there any doubt in your mind who you were going to choose if you got the opportunity or had you already pre-planned it? Yeah, a lot of doubt. Just generally didn't know. Um, I talked to coaches a few times about it. They said, listen, you don't know what ball you're going to get or where you're going to be. Just go with your gut. And that's what we've done. I stood up, I looked forward. Thought about picking, went through each one of them sort of in my head. And then, yeah, just had a gut feeling for blood. And it was a lot of reward with him. You know, he's highly ranked. Um, I went over and sort of put me, kind of me up there a bit. And... I think all the fighters, all the fighters there were good fights, and it's, I'm happy with the decision. Belotnik's is a bit of a strange one, and he started his career more or less as a journeyman, a, a quality import, if you like. I think he only won four of his first eight fights, but since then, particularly back home in Latvia, he's built a kind of pretty good run, and just recently got his best win over the Russian Ekimov, um, 18 and 0, I think he was, something yeah. like that. So, really, really good wins. He's kind of turned his career around. That shows a certain amount of mental strength, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's obviously tough mentally. Um, he's going to be there the whole fight, and he's, he's going to be there to win. I think everyone in the tournament is. Um, but for me, it's just performing. I, I feel like I can beat him, and I know I can beat him as long as I perform. Who are the kind of people you pick out in the tournament, apart from your opponent in the first round, that you think are going to go far? So who are your potential semi-final and then final opponents? Do you know what I, really, I really fancy Conroy to go for. I think the tournament suits him. I think... You know, same as me, he's maybe going a lot from our fight together. So I really fancy him. Um, hey, other fitters, obviously you've that good fight with, with Burton and I just saw if you know, you could have the winner of that go on. But listen, it's as good as you are on the night, eh? If your fight, and I don't know what the running order is, but if your fight's before Burton, how'd you say, will you be coming back out and watching it? I'll be out for a nosy. Might as well be rude not to. I've got a few coming up for Belfast, so i out down with them singing a few songs. <laughs> and before we let you go, just let people out there know how they can follow you on social media and get to know you a bit better. Uh, I would plug my social media here, but I very rarely remember them. Thanks. Stephen Ward under slash on Twitter and Stephen under slash Ward on Instagram. Brilliant. All right, well, we wish you the very best of luck Saturday night. We look forward to watching it. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.